I can remember the very first time that I went down to the Budokai. I was 16 years of age, and it was my dream to go to the Budokai to further my career. And I was only 16 years of age, and I remember mum and dad driving me down, and it was very quiet on the way down. My mum was in tears, and of course, they dropped me off uh, for this great big adventure. And it was an adventure, but I think if it had gone wrong, then they would have come down and got me. I'm almost sure of it. I could have gone home at any time. But I was there and I was determined. And I'd never been to the Budokai before. I remember going for my very first practice there at the Budokai. And I walked in and there they were. The whole of the British team were there. The likes of Brian Jacks, Dave Starbrook, Keith Renfrey, uh, Vass Morrison, uh, and then, of course, people like Kevin Crickmar and John Hindley, and they were the ones there that were... I mean, it was virtually the whole of the British team were there, and that was my main intention, was to go where uh, the judo was at and to train with the very best. And I realised very, very quickly that it was a pecking order. There was really a pecking order there and that I had to really work hard. I mean, I took my break falls at the beginning, but I was very determined to turn that around. And I did that quite quickly, worked my way up and uh, worked my way into the senior British team quite early. But uh, it was hard at the beginning. And I remember uh, being passed unconscious by Brian Jacks. And I said to him, and I said, you'll never do that to me again, ever. It's never going to happen again. Just bear that in mind. He thought that was funny, but I didn't. But anyway, uh, it happened and it never happened again. And I really, it was a motivation for me to get good and to get good quickly. But that was the Budokai. The Budokai attracted these great characters and these great people. And I think it has done that um, from the very, very early days. Uh, when Gunji Kazumi was uh, the founder of the original Budokai, which was, I think, in Victoria, at uh, Grosvenor Place in Victoria, and that was 1918. And then I think it moved to Kensington into the building that it's at in 1954, and I think because uh, of the Japanese connection, of course, that meant that we got some of the great Japanese fighters to come to the Budokai as the head instructors. And I think that that is what attracted people to the Budokai, and it always has done, all the way through. It still happens now. We still have the, the greatest fighters in the world coming to the Budokai. And I think that's wh what... Mr. Watanabe did when Mr. Watanabe came as the head instructor, and he was the head instructor, the head teacher at the Budokai for many, many years. And he had such an influence on British judo uh, because he was a technician, he was all Japan champion, and uh, didn't represent at world championships, but he was one of the he renowned as one of the best technicians in the world. And he could throw right and left, and it had such an impact on people like. Uh, Tony Sweeney and people like Angelo Parisi who came through, Brian Jacks, everybody, in fact, that uh, came in contact with Mr. Watanabe had uh, such a lot from him and took it with them. And, uh, of course, he's only just passed and a great loss to world judo. Uh, but uh, he gave, he left a legacy at the Budokai uh, for everybody to follow. And a lot of Japanese champions have followed as well. I mean, a little bit later from my competition career, I was the head instructor at the Budokai. And that was an honour, actually. For over 10 years, I was the head instructor. And I think everybody was a little bit nervous about whether I would mind if somebody else came in. And it was the exact opposite for me, because... Anybody that we had in, I would just, I used to soak up any information I could if, uh, and, and I, would, I would just learn from 
the greats, and uh, and that's exactly what happened. I mean, we had Mr. Kashibazaki uh, Sensei came into the club. Uh, he was world champion at the same year that I was world champion, but he was a bit older than me. And he came in, and they approached me, and they said, would I mind if he became the head instructor at the Budokai? I didn't mind at all. And, of course, I just used the situation to learn from one of the greatest judo players that I've ever known. Uh, he had such incredible transition from standing down to ground. He had a, a different view of Newaza than I had. And I just learnt so much from him. And the same went for Mr. Yamashita when he came over, one of the greatest judoka of all time. And there he was, uh, Mr. Yamashita came and 140 kilos, world heavyweight champion, world openweight champion. And, well, I had so many randerers with him over a two-year period. And it was just the greatest time. You know, we all did our, our uh, fair share of break falling but we got so much from him and we had so much fun as well it wasn't just that they were there they, we had so much fun with them and uh, it built up relationships between our own country and japan and uh, it, we still have those relationships now which is amazing but that was the experience of the budokai that's uh, you know if, if you have a look at a photograph now of some of the champions from the past and now have a look at some of the photographs that we've got uh, uh, recently they st they look like the same photograph they could be the same uh, taken at the same time except some are taken 60 years ago they've never changed because the budokai has never changed it's never changed in all of this time uh, it's still got that high beams and the cathedral look and it's a big open space, and it has that reverence, that feeling of a church, a place where you go to learn. And, and even the people that come through the club, and I think that's what a lot of people do, they kind of come through the club, and they, they travel through, but then they always come back. And it, it, it's one of the special things about the Budokai is that we, we always go back. I always go back, see my friends, you know, whenever I'm in London, I go back and I'll drop in to see my friends. And I mean, I've had some amazing friends um, from the Budokai, uh, that, uh, from internationally and, and also uh, from locally as well. And of course, that's where I built up my friendship, very special friendship with Ray Stevens. And Ray was to become not only my training partner, but he became such a, a close friend as well. But I mean, we used to go to Budokai every day for our training. We'd go to the health club next door to do our physical work. And we used it for uh, six years of our preparation for Olympic Games. And then, of course, Ray was later to become an Olympic medalist as well. And uh, again, because of the Budokai experience, and it was, it was just one of those things. It, it, uh, it was very, very special. And I think when I was talking to Peter Blewett, we were having a chat about how special Budokai is and how sometimes we take things for, for granted. Uh, I mean, like, for example, that picture that you can see there of... Oh, it could be just a, a club practice, couldn't it? It could be a normal club practice, but it isn't. It's, uh, it was a Budo invitation a lot of people came over and uh, it was one of the times that the uh, mr watanabe came back over uh, to visit us he's on the front row there and uh, just if you have a look at the photograph we've got mr endo there two-time world champion heavyweight champion and olympic champion as well uh, he's uh, on the left mr tony sweeney is behind uh, and then of course you've got uh, Mr. Kashiwazaki, uh, world champion, one of the greatest ever. You've got Mr. Nakanishi there. And, and then you've got uh, the former chairman, uh, Mr. Brian Davis, on the front there. And, of course, the current chairman, Peter Blewett. And we're all, and, and of course, myself there, just looking over at this crowd, thinking, wow, how spectacular is that? And it was. It was pretty special that we can... 
uh, have those people, all of those people, on one mat. Uh, and it was the Budokai mat. It was such an experience uh, to be able to be part of the Budokai. Uh, I'm honored, of course, that I was made a life member of the Budokai just recently. Uh, I'll never forget it. It'll always be in my heart. And I think that that goes for a lot of people out there. I know a lot of people that have said to me, the Budokai is the most special club that they've ever been to because it has that reverence and because they've got such happy memories there. And I certainly will carry those memories with me forever. It really is the most special club that I've ever been to. Thank <laughs> you.